So let's talk about um, setting up our routes for our user registration. We're gonna want a sign up URL, and this will go to say like registrations controller for new, and we will define that in our controllers folder. App controllers, we will say registrations controller dot RB. We'll define our class registrations controller inherit from application controller as usual, and we will define our new action in here. Now in this case, we want to create a new user in a variable, and we're gonna use an instance variable for this uh, user. So we'll say user.new, that will look at the database tables and attributes that we have in our user model, and it will create a new one in memory, and it will just assign it to a variable. And we're using an instance variable here instead of a regular variable like user without the at symbol, because in Ruby, this local variable will only be available inside of this uh, method. And then it will just get garbage collected and removed, and you won't be able to use it anywhere else. When we do an instance variable, this is actually going to be visible in our views. So when we create our app views, uh, we'll need a folder here called registrations. Inside of there, we'll make the matching new.html.erp, and we'll add our h1 for sign up. And we can actually print out at user here in the browser. So this instance variable gets assigned and it's visible and viewable and usable inside of your view. So in our browser, we can go to the sign up route that we just added and we're gonna get an error, no such file, bcrypt. Well, what happens here is that we added bcrypt, but we never restarted our Rails server, and so it doesn't know about that bcrypt gem. So we need to restart it. So you can hit Control C to cancel and shut down the Rails server, and just the up arrow to grab the previous command, the Rails server command, and restart it. That's what I do all the time. So now we can see that we get the sign up page and we get this user object. So this is a user in memory and it is printing out. This is a Ruby object that we've converted to a string and just put in our HTML. Nothing too fancy, but what's really neat is that Rails will allow you to generate a form using a form with helper. And we tell it what model we want to use and it will give us a variable um, that we can use called form. And we can use that to actually print out form text fields. And we can tell it we want one for the email attribute of that user. And we can do one for the password. And the same thing for our password confirmation. Now, if we render this page, we will see there is no method for user's path. So form with is actually going to look for a URL based upon our model. So it says, hey, looks like we have a user. We need to go find a URL helper in our routes called users. And there isn't one because we haven't defined one yet. So for this, we actually want a post request for it. And it's two users. And we can say two registrations create. Now this would work and fix our form here, but what we're gonna end up doing is making some confusing routes here where we have sign up, it goes to users, and we actually probably want something like sign up so we can make a get request and a post request where we send data from the browser to that and we'll send it to the create. So in order to make this work, we need to tell our form we want to use a URL instead and that's gonna be the sign up path. And that, of course, you can always check the Rails routes and look for your routes and see what the names are. So here we have our get. It is given the name of sign up. And this get and post reference the same URL. And this is something important to understand that the same URL can handle multiple types of requests. Rails routes calls them verbs. Get, post, patch, put, delete, um, and there are some other options there that you won't generally use. But these are the ones that we want. So we can use the sign up path to get the correct URL for our form, and we give it the model so we can have it generate the correct fields to send over. 
So let's refresh our page now. And we will see that it generates a form to the action slash sign up. So it knows the URL. And then when we look through the fields of this, it has defined some stuff for us. So it set the method automatically. And it's also accepting UTF-8 format characters so that you can make sure that it will handle emojis and other things like that. And then our, we have a hidden field for the authenticity token to make sure that it is being submitted securely to our server. And then we have a user email. So this user email is going to be our email address. The server is going to be able to see that and parse it out and know that it's the user's email. And we have the same thing for password and password confirmation. So if we were to type our email in here and password, this will all work, but it's not going to look pretty and we're going to want to actually change a few things. We don't want our password shown in plain text. So one of the things we can do is use the password field instead of text for the passwords. And now if we refresh this and type in here, it's dots because the password field in the browser is input type equals password and it will not display the password. And if you ever want to write some JavaScript, you can switch it from type as text to type as password if you want to do one of those show your password buttons so people can confirm that they type the right thing. That's all you need to do to switch that in your browser. It's kind of cool. So let's go and make this a little bit more friendly. We'll put a div around each of these and let's do a closing div on each one and then we'll add some classes from Bootstrap to make them prettier. So let's just go do this real quick and then take a look at the Bootstrap forms so you can see uh, how form controls work in Bootstrap. The way that Bootstrap works is you put a class around and you say, put some margin on the bottom, about three, size three is what they recommend, and then your fields will have a form control class. So we can go and do that, we can say, class equals mb3 on each one of those. And then for these, we'll say class is form control. So let's copy this to each one of them that we've got. And once this is done, we should have a much friendlier looking form. So now let's refresh the page and we have a better looking form, but it would really be helpful if we had some labels. So what Rails provides is form.label and you give it the name of the field and it will set up a label where you click this label and it will highlight the correct field automatically for you. So it knows how to connect those two based upon the name that you give it. So here we can say, let's add one for our password and another one for our password confirmation attribute of our user model. And I'm going to tab all of this over two spaces so it is aligned properly. And we'll refresh and now we'll see email, password, and password confirmation. Another thing to add here for convenience is to give examples. And you can use the placeholder attribute and say steve at apple.com. And you can add placeholders even to your password, we can just say password there and password confirmation and that will give you some examples inside of the fields that get removed when you start typing in them. So now we have a form that is functional but we need to actually have a submit button to submit this to the server. So we'll grab this and we'll grab a div and we'll have form.submit and that will give us a submit button that automatically knows to look at the form model. So submit doesn't really say anything about create user, but it is smart enough to know that our form that we're using, so submit is talking to form, and form is knows that we have a model called user, and the model is brand new, so it knows if it's brand new and it's not saved in the database, we want to say create and the model name. And you can change this to any other model and edit as well. And it will say update user or update post or create post. And it's going to automatically infer that stuff, which is super cool. So 
If you want to override that though, you can pass in a string as an argument to submit. So you can say get started, um, you can say, for example, sign up, and that will change the button text. But the default text is smart enough to look at the model that you gave it, which is pretty nifty. Now the last thing that we want to do here is say class button button primary. And that is a bootstrap class for adding a blue button to the page. So it makes our button look prettier and feel more like a bootstrap app.